So when you consider this grasp, you have two dynamics. Hmm? The dynamic of the end and the dynamic of the, the object in the interaction. They are represented by these two equations. So you have J transpose lambda is equal to tau minus the dynamic part in case you are not in equilibrium configuration and then you have minus G lambda is equal to double B minus the dynamic of the object in case you are not in equilibrium. We said that if the null space of J transpose is equal to zero, hmm? you simply forget the first equation and focus your attention on the second one, on the object. And this is the case that we are doing. Hmm? You want to do something, you want to resist a branch, you want to apply a certain dynamic to the object, because if you want to have a, a certain trajectory of the object, you can compute this in terms of inertia and velocity-dependent forces, and you can have a desired trajectory, dynamics of the object. For a given uh, force that you want to resist, gravity, or dynamics that you want to give to the object, command to the object, you can compute a certain lambda. Okay? And the lambda, again, is simple if the number if the rank of g is six because you can solve this linear equation plus you have to satisfy the lambda should be within the friction cone and this is given provided that is guaranteed provided that the null space of g is different from zero and there is at least one solution in the friction cone so you you have your desired behavior you compute your lambda your hand can do it simple nothing more difficult than this, okay? Well, nothing that difficult than this is not. Uh, let's let's uh, focus a little bit on uh, uh, what we want to do now, no? Because the, what's the sequence? So the first the the, the the functional sequence. So you have a decide object dynamics. Hmm? You want to hold, you want to accelerate. You generate a first decide lambda. Hmm? Okay? And then you have to be sure that it satisfies the friction cone. Hmm? Okay? And you manipulate here the null space of G, okay, with some force control. And then finally, you go to the first equation and decide what are the tau, which are the tau to be applied to the object, to the manipulator dynamics, to the hand dynamics. Okay? And you get your behavior. Your behavior. So the external, the external loop of control is a position control on the desired object. Then you want to satisfy that the contact forces are within the friction cone, and then you compute the tau that go to the to the end object dynamics. Okay? And this is in case you can decouple the two equations. So what happens when you cannot decouple these two equations? Well, at the beginning, let me let me just say that uh, I will forget the dynamic case because the dynamic case and the equilibrium case are very similar provided that you can measure the object. One of the problems is that how I can measure the, the velocities and the acceleration of the joints on my hand, not easily for the object. We then I have to observe the object dynamics, either with the camera or from uh, some observer uh, with the content detection or whatever. But okay, if you have the right uh, measurements, you can deal with the static and dynamic, uh, with the, and dynamics with the same uh, complexity. Now let me take the, 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 the equilibrium or static case. So you have J transpose lambda is equal to tau and 
minus g lambda is equal to rho Of course, if uh, I'm considering the case where the null space of j transpose is different from zero, hmm? which means that there are lambda one. I mean, there are different. There are many lambda. There are many lambdas such that j transpose lambda is equal to zero. So I cannot disentangle. So I'm not sure that applying a given theta, I have a certain lambda. Hmm? Because then there are 1,000 lambdas that give the same tau. How can I be sure? Can I be sure about it? And one of the big things in uh, robotics is that uh, I need to both observe, but also be sure that the lambda that I'm applying is the one I'm considering. Hmm? So, if I consider just the first equation in case of null space of g transpose different from zero, is not enough to specify lambda, even if I add more tau. Hmm? Because for one tau, there are infinite lambdas. It's not good. Hmm? So, now one can say, okay, look, why don't we look at both together? So, if you know the tau, and if you know the range, the external range, can you compute the lambda? Forget about the control, just observation, no? Now, you, you know, look at my hand. You know the torques because you are controlling it. Hmm? You know the, uh, the gravity of the object. Can you estimate the lambda? Is your model enough to understand what are the forces at the lambda? Well, this is, again, quite uh, interesting because then you have j transpose minus g lambda is equal to tau double v. And what I said before is that you know tau you know the range applied to the object, so you know exactly this term, you know exactly this matrix. The question is that if you can control, if you can evaluate this lambda. Hmm? A solution exists, okay, a solution exists, you want to understand just if the lambda can be evaluated. The only way to ensure that there is a lambda that can be Evaluated is that this equation has only one solution. <coughs> because again, if there are infinite solutions, I'm not sure at all what the lambda will be. So, to guarantee that for a given tau and a given double v, with these equations, I can evaluate the lambda, I need to, don't, to have a single solution to this equation. To have a single solution to this equation, I have to guarantee that there is no null space of this matrix. So, if the null space of the coefficient matrix that in this case is this one is equal to zero, then I am sure that if a solution exists, lambda is unique. And the unicity of this lambda allows me to be to say that this model is enough to describe the grasp. Okay? Then you can stay with this model only if the null space of g transpose g minus g is equal to zero. We can easily show that the null space of j transpose minus g is equal to zero if and only if the intersection of the null space of j transpose intersected null space of g is equal to zero. So if you are sure that there is no intersection practically between these two subspaces, then that's zero, and you can still work with this model. What this model is, this is a rigid contact model, rigid body model. Mm -hmm. So we are not allowing any penetration at the contact, okay? And we are 
considering a, a rigid model for the interaction. In case that you will see in the next lecture that the null space of G transpose intersected the null space of G is different from zero, which let this model J transpose lambda is equal to tau minus G lambda is equal to double root V fail to describe everything then you need more advanced modeling. Hmm? You need more <coughs> advanced models that does not work with the forces only, but try to couple displacement and forces. So you need some viscoelastic model of the complex. Okay? So in this case you need some relationship between lambda forces and displacement. Okay? To get rid of this problem of indeterminacy. Indeterminacy means that you have infinite solution and you get crazy to understand what's going on there. So you need a more advanced model that gives you a unique solution and then you can keep going on modeling and controlling and do your stuff with your grasp. Okay? Now the big problem is that this is simple. Fingertip grasp is super simple. It's the simplest thing. It's the more complex thing in terms of uh, mechanics uh, and everything, but it's super simple in terms of control. The previous, the initial grasping studies and the investigations papers has been done on this. Most of the work done in the uh, book of uh, <coughs> Sastri is on this case. Nowadays we have a configuration like this where the, uh, it happens exactly in this case, in this configuration, the null space of G transpose intersect and the null space of G is different from zero. Okay. And you cannot control the forces very well with this model. You need a much more advanced modeling. Okay. Seems more complex, and indeed is more complex. But the new hands, and also our brain, works with just one control, very compliant. You know, to get rid of this, you need a compliance, and this should be compliant also mechanically. So the, the model is complex, but your hardware has only one degree of freedom. So at the very end, even if you are wrong in part of the modeling, you still have to, to control one variable. So maybe you don't need a so advanced control and modeling because you just have one, you just have to grasp or not. So you don't care because you want to grasp it and pick somewhere with the arm, not with the finger. You don't need to do some manipulation inside. So this seems very complex and this is very complex in modeling, but the control is so simple that you can get rid of this complexity because of the simplicity of your hardware. Okay?